Hi, so today we are going to be building a soilarium. And a soilarium is basically a way we can visualize what happens when we build a compost bin. Because with this demonstration, we'll actually be able to see what happens when items that we put into the compost start to decompose and how those interactions between the different components we put into our soil area work together to create new soil. So some of the things you're going to need, a uh, clear glass jar. If you don't have a clear glass jar, a plastic jar will work just as well. Just make sure it's clear so that you can see. Um, you can use a piece of aluminum foil and a rubber band for the cover. You can also use a lid if you'd like, but just make sure you poke holes inside that lid because the way that we have to have this be successful to work, you gotta have oxygen. And so we're gonna need some air holes. You're gonna need to have scissors or a knife. Kids, if you're doing this on your own, make sure you've got mom or dad's help to do some cutting. You're also gonna want some fruit and vegetable scraps, some dried leaves or brown paper or newspaper, and some soil. And I have a mixture of garden soil and a little bit of compost. You're also gonna want a water bottle. And last but not least, make sure you've got a black permanent marker of some kind. If you don't have one, um, another, a little piece of tape will work just as well. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build our soil area. And building a soil area is kind of like making a, a pan of lasagna. You're just layering in your ingredients. And so the first ingredient we're going to put inside our soil area is soil. And so we just want to put in maybe, you know, two and a half centimeters or an inch worth at the bottom of some soil. And then once you've got a layer of soil, go ahead and put in some vegetable scraps. You do want to make sure they're cut up though small because what we're going to see hopefully over the weeks is you'll be able to visually be able to watch all of these different components decompose. And so the smaller your substances are in here, the different particles, the smaller they are, the less, um, the, actually the more surface area you're creating and so they'll decompose faster. So if you cut up your, like for example, I have a banana peel. If you cut up your banana peel as part of your food scrap, make sure you cut into small bits. I also have some uh, little bits of spinach ends that we didn't eat and um, some tomatoes that had gone bad. So just cut them up into small pieces. All right, and don't worry about getting your hands messy. They're gonna get a little messy. It's okay, it's for science. Okay, so once you've got your soil, go ahead and put in your fruit and vegetable scraps. Again, just a little bit, we're gonna layer it. And then once you've got that, we're gonna put in our paper or dry leaves. So remember, composting is really mixing um, two types of materials, greens and browns. Um, you'll hear about, talk about greens and browns. What we're really doing is we're putting in a great source of carbon, which are dry materials like newspaper, or brown paper bags or leaves. And then we're also adding in a great source of nitrogen, which are our um, more moist materials that still contain a lot of water. So our vegetable and fruit scraps. Those two elements, nitrogen and carbon, are essential to be able to build great soil. So I've got my first layers. You can see it's not, it doesn't look beautiful like pretty layers like in a cake, um, but it's getting there. So then just keep going, get some more soil. The key for building a soil area is that you have each necessary component to be able to um, show what composting looks like and how a composting system works. And it's more of a fresh, or not so fresh anymore, <laughs> some of my slowly decomposing fruits and vegetables. Layer them up. And then some more browns, my source of carbon, the dry leaves. Lots of newspaper. Again, the smaller you cut up your newspaper um, and chop up your leaves, the faster it will decompose because increased surface area increases the rate of decomposition. Just like 
when you have granular sugar, it dissolves a lot faster than a chunk of sugar, simply because you've increased the surface area. You've made it smaller. So the smaller your pieces, the faster they'll decompose. All right, one more layer. Soil. scraps. I think I might need to cut up just a little bit more banana peel to fit into here. Who knew playing with your food could be so much fun, right? All right, and a little bit more banana peel. And then some more nice dried newspaper and leaves. Once you've got it full, and you can see there's a lot of air in there, it's not packed down, and that's actually good. You don't want it to be super packed because in order for aerobic or oxygen-loving bacteria to start breaking things down, they need oxygen. So another essential ingredient is water. So I could have sprayed each layer as I went, and you can when you're building yours. My food scraps were so moist, especially because I had some tomatoes that have a lot of water in them didn't need to spray each layer but again this is up to you you can spray as you go the instructions do say to spray the layers as you build or you can just put a nice moist layer on top you just want your soil area to have some moisture inside okay so once I've got it sprayed down I've got some moisture in there I am going to go ahead and seal up my soil area so what I'm going to use is I have a piece of aluminum foil and I'm just going to cover it like this and then to ensure that it stays I am going to just put a rubber band on the top. Okay. Now I am going to want to poke some holes in the top here. You can just use a toothpick and poke a few holes in the top of your aluminum foil to make sure that oxygen does get into your soil area. I'm going to fold these up just so you can kind of see. And then the last thing you want to do is you want with your permanent marker, or if you don't have a permanent marker, tape works well too. You're going to want to just make a mark as to where you filled your soil area to. So today I started here. I'm going to put today's date. Okay, and so I know that today they happened to be November the 8th of 2022, that when I filled my soil area, it was filled to the top, all right? So now, every week, I want you to come back and check on your soil area. And as you check on it, what I mean by checking on it is, look to see how the level of your soil area changes. Does it change at all? Do the contents of your soil area start to break down? And if so, mark it with a date. Hopefully you'll see the decomposition process started. Okay? Another thing that's essential to help the soil area uh, work, just like composting outside works, is sunlight for a warmer environment. So um, right now where I am in Pennsylvania, it's November, getting a little bit chillier so I will probably keep this inside but on a sunny windowsill because that solar energy will also help to speed up the decomposition process. If you're somewhere where it's warm outside feel free to put it outside or if you're concerned about little fruit flies feel free to put it outside because it is a decomposition process. You may get a few little fruit flies that are really curious about what's inside here so either way inside or out it'll work. If it is inside, just try and put it in a sunny window. You can also, if you download on, um, if you've downloaded the worksheets that I have for you, and they're created um, through Raising Global Kittisons, you'll actually have a tracker right here. And this will help you track the process of your soil area decomposition, or really, or modeling is what happens when something composted. And so I've given you just some basic jars but I'd love you to color and draw what you see at each week of your progress, okay? We're gonna monitor this for two weeks. You can monitor it for as long as you'd like. Two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. In reality, 
depending on where you are composting in the world and depending on the season, it all depends on how quickly this will decompose. So if you're working in an equatorial area, when it's very warm, decomposition happens very quickly. If in the winter months, myself here in Pennsylvania, it could take up to a year for some things to decompose based on where my, comp my compost is located. So give it a try, make sure you take a picture, and let me know how it works.